Hello, welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 and the final episode of the How to Use Course Play. So in this episode, we are really going to go big. We're going to challenge ourselves and try and be using, well, four harvesters, which you probably saw at the start of the video. And we're going to be using four balers. We're also going to be using a main carter that's going to be taking the grain um, basically from the augers to the silo. Uh, and then we've got two augers, one over there and one in the middle, which I thought was a really good point for it to wait. Uh, so we will set that up in a second. And their jobs is to basically take the grain from the harvesters, the four harvesters, um, and then obviously take it to the grain cart. So there is going to be quite a lot going on in this field, and hopefully, fingers crossed, it works a treat. But that being said, this is going to be a challenge for course play, because it is in early development still. This isn't a final version. Um, it technically is, isn't even a real beta. We're, we're talking about the alpha um, stages now of this. And if this works, I have to say, it's definitely going to impress me. So with all that said, let's crack on because this is going to take some time. So first thing I'm going to do is just jump down and we're going to start with this. This is going to be the carter. So let's just quickly take off flight mode. Right, so as you know from the last episode, I'm not going to be setting up the whole auto drive route just because it's already done. We've got a turn point here, which is technically for this carter or a carter coming from the direction that we did in the last video to come up here, turn around and go in there to reverse. But we don't need to worry about that because we're going to be going out this way. So it's going to go that way and back in. So what we need to do though, is when it comes over here, we need a field one waypoint. Now we have got one already, which is over here. So it'll go over here, uh, sit nicely at field one and wait for some, obviously some vehicle to unload. But the problem with that is, can he turn around? And I don't think he can. So I'm going to make a different one. I'm going to make one that just goes to the left hand side if I can reverse properly here. Let's try that again. There we go. Um, and I'm going to obviously try and my best not to swing into the field, but unfortunately, I think it might have to happen. Um, let's go a little bit forward and let's take it from this point here. So this bit now is pretty much just a carbon copy of what I did in the last episode. So you've already seen this. You, you know about how making how to make a route, um, but the only difference is when we do the course play, we're going to be setting up multiple tools for the uh, harvesters. And then we're also going to be doing a little bit of a difference when it comes to the August, because there's going to be one aiming for two harvesters and the other one aiming for the other two harvesters. So I think that there is a perfect spot. So we'll just call that field one. Multi-weight. Now I know what that means again you probably want to make that a little bit more um, relevant than what it is right now but it'll do for today so let's swing this around we're going to go properly wide here just so it's got a good turn because this is pretty heavy and when this is full full it's going to be a challenge now i'm hoping that this trailer will actually use that reverse trigger quite well to the salad don't know until i've tried it though but there's only one way to find out so we may as well just start this off. Um, if I get onto the blue point, that's where I want this dot to be, there we go. Um, and then we're just gonna tell it to pick up and deliver. This is gonna pick it up from, it's gonna be in default because of where it is. We're gonna put this for F1 multi weight and we're gonna be taking it to the arable farm empty. And we're gonna be doing barley this time around. So where's the barley? There we go. And then if we set that going, he should get to this point and wait. And the good thing about doing this now is setting him up. We're going to be able to see where the trailer itself sits. Now I'm going to reduce the cornering speed. There is no rush on this. 60%, not a problem. 85, um, yeah, I think, do you know what? 80% is going to be fine for that. Leave that there. That's all done. No settings need to change on that one. So that's done. So now what we want to do is go to these augers. Now, obviously, we're going to try and put this one here. It's going to be the same as what it was before, but we're going to have two wait points. So we do need to start recording the course. We're going to do a single line. Um, and if we just put it, like, let's just say the wait point is there. We'll call that one just F1. F1, A for auger, wait one. That'll do me. So we need to now just give it a good... bit of space to turn around the best we can obviously it's going to probably swing and hit 
at some point the yeah obviously at some point it's going to swing around and hit probably some of the crop but we can try to try and minimize that a little bit now I'm hoping there's a little bit of a field edge here but it doesn't look like there is and there might be a touch so we're just gonna to have to go through the field a little bit which isn't too bad obviously you won't, don't want to be doing this really but because of where we are this is the best we can hope for there isn't really much of a headland to go around here now what I can do is just connect this to here because we've already got it in place so there's that done and all we're going to have to do is when we come back is connect it right back up to finish that loop off that we started to that weight point but what we do want to do is make sure we get this one spot on this is quite a travel for the auger to go to over here but do you know what we've got another one going at it so it shouldn't be too bad now it's a shame I didn't put him on the left hand side because this would have been a lot easier but it is what it is so we're going to have to swing this around because of where the pipe is so let's record from here we're going to go out into the field give it plenty of room here to turn around and then nice and steady here to try and line it up pretty sweet now the front of the tractor I, I because obviously it's going to trigger it's going to sense that it's going to put into the trailer anyway but I think that should be fine there and if we call this A for auger empty F1 for field 1 that should be fine um, and then all we need to do is basically branch back onto this multi-line or two way direction the blue one And hopefully you follow me along on this. If you watch my other videos, this will be the last one on the play playlist. If you've watched them all in the order of the playlist, you should know how to set these up and uh, understand why I'm doing this. So now all we need to do is go back to the point over here. We could have made it two-way in all honesty, but we're, we're just going to make it single, uh, single line route. And then I'd say it doesn't really matter where we start this from. But let's just start it from this point here. A little bit forward. There we go. And we'll start recording again. And what we should find is that's fine there. That's not too bad. Um, we're just basically going to follow this line. So we're actually going to go over it, which means it probably would have been a little bit better just to go two-way at this point. But you know what? We've done it now, and it'll be fine. We'll still do the job. And then we're going to cut back over here. But this time we want to be on the right hand side. It is a little bit bumpy, this auger. It just like to bob about. I guess when it's more full, we won't have that issue. So let's just close this off now. Right. And then all we need to do now is just connect this up. Um, and then we won't set it going yet not like the other one we'll actually leave it for a second um, but that is now done so that is all done and then all we'll do now is just change a few of the settings um, cornering speed we want to put down 65 pipe offsets fine unload fill level 90% for these because of the fact that they they don't hold that much anyway restrict pathfinder to the field yes I prefer that restrict the unloader to the field not an issue right now Avoid the fruit, yes. Turn them both off. I'm happy with that. Let's go back in here. Collision detection is set to on. Look ahead distance, it's fine at five meters, that is. Don't need to worry about that. So I'm happy with them settings for that. That should be fine. I don't think I've missed anything. Um, and all we can do now is just basically put it on to unload combine. Um, we won't set it going, but we will put the weight point. So we want it to weight it. It'll be in default, which is F1A weight 1. And we're going to be taking it to F1, no, sorry, A, 
empty F1. Now we can just leave that for the meantime. And now we need to do the other one. So again, this is going to be pretty much the same thing, but just a different point on the field. And I'm actually going to put it around here because I think it'll be a good point for it. But we want it to be off that main road because we don't want it to obviously have an issue when it comes to people carting um, on this road anyway, or people driving up and down, sorry, on this road. So we don't want it to block the way. So if we start it from here, record a route, we'll tell it to wait probably about here. I'm happy with that there. So let's call this F1 A for Auger. We need a capital there. Wait 2. That's fine. And then we'll swing back in. Doesn't matter about going into the field here. It's not an issue. And then what we need to do is just connect it back up to probably about here. And he will then quite happily follow that same route to go and swing around to get on this point here. There we go. Let's just make sure this works. So if we just drive now, we'll just test this out quickly. Just to try and catch any problems before they happen. Um, we'll put it on drive mode and we want to go to... A1 empty F1. A... I don't know why I keep saying A1. A empty F1. And then again... Fields... We'll probably need that down to... 65. And we can up this to 90%. Restrict Pathfinder to the field, yes. Restrict unloader, not not too worried about that. Automatic refuel, we don't want that. To, we don't want to worry about that too much. Um, and then just apply. Now, if we open this pipe up, actually see whereabouts he finishes. That is spot on. And obviously, it'll probably trigger about here, like he did last time. Uh, but as long as he can then carry on. So let's test that he can get to his actual destination, which is number two. Which is just here. So we should just sit here nice and happy and wait. So but we'll stop him here just because we'll need to set him going. Uh, so let's get this all prepped before we set it to actually uh, before we enable it. And we need that to be wait two, which it is, and then we need this to go to A empty F1. I think that's alright, so let's just confirm that. A empty F1. Let's switch over to here a second. Just want to check that this is AMTF1. They all look fine, so I think we're good there. So now, what we need to do is set up the courses. So we'll start with the front one because it's easier, and we'll get into the course play menu. So here we go. So this is the big one now. This is where we're going to be using multi tools on this field. Um, we don't need to worry about auto drive just yet. Right, so now we're in the active workers page. We just need to create a job like we normally would. So we're going to go to course play field work. We're going to pick the field position, which is field one. Um, we're then going to just open up this. We're going to go to our high. Well, we already know this is right from the last episode. This multiple tools we're using four. So I've put that to four. We're going to change this down. We're going to just do two. That means that each one's going to do two headland passes. That actually works out to be eight because of the fact there's four multiple tools doing two passes, two headland passes. I'm perfectly fine with that. We'll start work on the headland. We'll put it to smooth again, clockwise as always, because the pipe's on the left-hand side. 12% uh, just because it means that we might miss less bits. Change it to lands mode. Each land's going to have four rows, um, and we're going to have a simple bypass because there is a few poles down here that I'm hoping it's going to notice, but we'll find out if it does. And we're going to generate the field work course. Right, so it's done, and you can see that it, it does look a little bit all over the shop here. Now we are using lands and multiple tools, so it does look like this header example is massive, but it's not. It's just taking into account that we're gonna have four harvesters going along this course here. This is gonna be pretty tricky, but also um, I think it's gonna work. I'm hopeful anyway. So what I'm gonna do now is save this. It's important that I save this. I'm just gonna put it in my test folder over here, 
and we're going to save course in that one, activate, and we're just going to call it multi for the purpose of this video. So we've got that saved. So we want to be changing, obviously, the um, settings now for these vehicles. Um, so we need to make sure we go and make sure that we activate that one. Raise the tool, that's all fine. That's all fine. Always unfold the pipe, activated. Stop while unloading needs to be activated. We'll keep straw on. Now this is important here. I haven't put this on active activated before. I don't think it needs to be on activated, but we're going to try it on the default, which is deactivated. Um, but these are the multi-tool settings. Now the convoy distance is the distance between the first to the second, the basically the gap in between, and the same for the third and the same for the fourth. 164 feet is a good gap to have, but I'd keep it at the default for this. We're going to just try it with what it's set, but I'm happy with this. We're going to save that. We don't want it to repair. That's all fine. So we're ha I'm happy with that. Now, because we've got two harvesters here that are going to be feeding one auger, and the other two are the other, are, are going to be feeding this auger, for example, we need to now find where the first waypoint is of the field, which is over here. Um, if we just look at that course again, you can see that it does miss bits here. So it's like this here. Uh, there is a, there is something going on with this. I don't know how this is going to perform, but it does notice that there is two objects in the field it needs to avoid. So we'll see how this gets on. But at least it's noticed them. Right, so we're obviously just going to keep this on drive mode. But I'm going to tell these two that their auger is going to be this one. So to do that, we just need to change the location over here to A to A to F1, A, weight 2, which is that one there, and that's that. So if we now go to this, here's a good, probably a perfect spot to start this off. Um, and then over here on this bit here, which is really important, you've got four, you'll have four options because if you've picked four, you'll have four, or if you've picked two or three, it depends on how many multi-tools you've got. We've got left one, right one, right two, and left two. Now. The left one is obviously the most to the left and side of the course, and then you'd have left two, and then you'd have right one and right two. So what we're going to do is just set it on left one, first waypoint, and off you go. Now I am just changing this. We're going to just I'm just going to leave this be until I've set the fourth harvester, just to see if it's just waiting for me to set all four of these with a the course. Um, so let me just quickly first make sure that I put this as F1A2 weight. F1A weight two, sorry. So I also need to remember to activate these. So let this go because then this will actually say, I'm waiting for call. Right, so now let's quickly just set this one as well to go and wait here. So these two are set. There is a weight there that I changed. I put a bail pusher on this just to see how it perform. There we go, that's that. Right, so now in this one, we're gonna change this over here to default weight one that one there and then this course needs to be loaded in multi load course activate we can see that it's there that's that's good and then we just need to put this as right one and go so we just need to load this one in that activate that should be loaded in now it is happy days Go back and change this to right two and first waypoint. And then we need this to be default weight one and go. So now the, the harvester up there is gone, but we're just going to stop this a second because I do need to change the second one over here to the first waypoint. Uh, the third, it's actually the third one, sorry. And that's only because I forgot to put that on first waypoint. There is so many things over here, it is quite difficult to remember. So right one, go. And then let's bring this one up. There we go. Now hopefully we won't have any issues now. This should all be set up now. This, Fingers crossed, this is all set up now. So if we go to flight mode... You should just start cracking on with it. 
Obviously, he's a bit impatient. But as you can see, we've got one harvester going, we've got the second harvester going. And now we've also got the third harvester going, and finally, the fourth one. Let's just see how he performs with that. He should miss it. And there we go. Four harvesters on the crack, all running this course nicely. And they should be at a steady distance between each other. I think if the first one obviously gets too far, he will slow down for the second, uh, the third the same, just so they all keep that same distance in between. But look how much, look how much they've already done. And they're only small harvesters. This is the beauty of having multi-tools. And if you really got the money behind you, and let's say you build up your farm and you eventually get a lot of equipment, and this is what it can do for you. So it'll be interesting to see how they perform on their up and downs, but they are doing a pretty good job right now, as you can see. So I think I don't really need to do much else now. I just need to obviously capture this in action and make a really good montage of this going along. So you've seen me how I set it up. What should happen, though, is the augers should do their job um, and they should start taking from the harvesters and then it should eventually go over to the trailer over here. Um, and then at some point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the uh, balers to start as well. Now, to do that, all I'm going to try and do, which I've never done before, so I'm going to see if it works, is I'm going to try and use this exact same course that the harvesters are running on, uh, but with four balers instead of uh, four harvesters. And we'll see how it gets on. So enjoy the montage. Hopefully it'll be a good one. And uh, you'll see in there if the balers do work a treat.
Right, so welcome back. Hopefully you've enjoyed the montage. Um, this has gone okay, I'd say. It's not been too bad. There has been a few issues, though. Um, mainly around, I'd say, the fact that Courseplay probably needs a bit of uh, collision detection. We've got it in auto drive, but, uh, yeah, the Courseplay had issues. So the first course that I did, uh, the walls on the edges, it didn't really detect. And if you look at this headland here that it was generating because of the fact that it saw this as something it needed to bypass in the middle. On that fourth one... Uh, the third one just missed it, but the fourth one, the far left-hand side, it used to hit the wall, and it didn't detect it as well, so I'd have to go in and change that. Uh, so the way that I counteracted that was basically by uh, changing the course that it didn't need to uh, avoid um, obstacles in the fields, which made it just an up and down, so it'd actually drive through this grass patch. Uh, that's obviously easily avoided as well, because most fields do don't have the grass patch like that in the middle. Uh, another issue I found is... Obviously, I had two posts over here that it wouldn't detect, and if I avoided, obviously, obstacles because of this bit over here, it then hit this, so I had to adjust that. Um, and also, I made a few changes to the settings, so I did actually change it where it doesn't need to avoid uh, fruit in the field on auto drive when it comes to uh, trying to process, uh, or pathfind, should I say, to the carters, and, and uh, it did help a lot, that really did, because the pathfinding can take its time if... if for example, the uh, harvester was all, all the way on that side of the field and the pathfinder was over here. Um, and then it's obviously got to try and avoid four um, harvesters, uh, or three harvesters, to get to the fourth or the one that is targeting one. I mean, look at that for a shot. Perfect timing here with these balers. Now, the balers are working a treat. They really are. They're getting through it without any issues. Uh, but what I have found as well, another thing, is the gaps that it's supposed to leave in between, mainly... I'd say number two and three, which would be left one and right one, they always catch up with each other. So that wasn't working the way it's supposed to. But remember, this is in early development mode, like I mentioned. Um, so it does have them issues. And uh, multiple tools are probably better to be used right now, currently. I'd, I'd recommend maybe going with two. Uh, try not to go to four. And if you do go to four, make sure you've got a really nice field with no collisions on the edge and stuff like that. But it can work, and it does work. It's just about fine-tuning them settings so like I said remember try and increase the pathfinder on auto driver on auto drive and also then try and put, uh, make it so it can drive within the field on auto drive and in course play so it doesn't need to avoid the fruit um, and then obviously over time when the more updates come out you'll see that it starts to work pretty well Ooh, there you go there's a, a collision for you and that's because I parked that there now auto drive weirdly does have um, collision detection on and it should have stopped for that I mean it will reverse out the way hopefully she will or he will it is a he but what we can just quickly do is just move this out of the way and the reason that I parked that there as well is because I decided just to stop the harvesters um, so we can crack on with the bale inside of things and yeah it's worked out pretty well with the balers and all I did was copy the same course so the, the, the multiple tool course the one that I did the second one not the one with the headland um, in the middle where it has to avoid that the second one and as you can see it's working pretty well it's a, so far avoiding um, like I said if you can see now this one always seems to catch up number two it's even trying to get ahead of the first one which is very strange it should always keep a distance between so maybe that's a little bug within multi-tools right now that hopefully will be fixed soon. But I am still learning this. It's, it's, it really is interesting to do to try and get multiple tools on the go. Um, it can work, as you've seen. We've harvested quite a bit of the field, um, and it had obviously finished that off. But it does tend to take quite a bit of uh, maintaining as well at the same time. So my recommendation is, if you're going to go to the multi-tool, then main thing is I probably wouldn't early days especially with course play the way it is I wouldn't go for more than two just try to keep it at two and also if you're using auto drive the same for that so just have two of each and I think you should be fine then 
But overall, I'm happy with it. I got some great shots for the montage as well, and uh, it just proves that this is probably, I'd say, the most advanced thing you can do within Auto Drive and uh, Courseplay combined, which is having a full on harvest like this with multiple tools going. So it is p far from perfect. You can see now what I mean by needing collision detection because this these two would notice that they're there and one of them's ahead of the other um, and we won't be having this issue. It's like they're trying to race um, whereas this one here should be in the in the lead I think. I think it is. Um, and we shouldn't have any collisions like this because it notices within its course that there's a collision. Um, so it stops and allows the gaps in between. Now if these gaps were there and they were prominent then we wouldn't have this issue at all because the gaps aren't forming naturally and uh, we're starting to see the, the issues where these are catching up like you can see now there should be a 200 feet gap I increased it as well but yeah it is promising though I mean like I said it's early development we're going to see issues like this we really are and also it needs to be kept in mind that it's only just been implemented as well multi-tools has only just come in whereas the other features within course play uh, I've been in there for a while and they've had a lot of time to troubleshoot but what you will be seeing if you if you keep an eye out on the updates coming out there'll be a lot of bug fixes for multi-tools and then this we won't have a problem with and the uh, the gaps will be there and uh, hopefully as well we'll get some uh, collision detection as well but overall I'm definitely happy with it this is the first time I've actually done this in a field I've used multi-tools before with two, never used Bayless as well and I've also never gone above like I said two vehicles uh, so having four was a first um, but the, in all fairness to the auto drive, that worked a treat. Having this going around um, with the auger worked perfectly. It, it took everything to the green cart. Um, the augers worked perfectly fine. Their pathfinder eventually got there. Sometimes it was a bit tricky for them because they were obviously trying to avoid quite a lot of vehicles. But they did it. So auto drive seems to be spot on at the moment. And we'll get there. We'll definitely get there within time. Uh, the more t bugs you report as well, the more issues we find. And let them know the more issues will get fixed so i have decided that i am going to revisit this we'll leave it a few months and see what updates come out if, we, if i do notice there's a lot of multiple tools um, updates that have been implemented within courseplay i will revisit this and we'll do it again but maybe use even a bigger field um, and we'll try and uh, pick yeah maybe an american style map and we'll try and go max out with it and see what what we can do and see how good it is i mean i do like testing it like this and it does prove that it's there the basics are there there is a few bugs and it's not perfect but it's definitely good and promising uh, so hopefully by the end we'll have a fully working course play when it comes to multiple multiple tools so on that note i am going to leave the video there thanks for watching hopefully you have enjoyed it if you have please give it a thumbs up because that does help my channel out and if you're new don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos just like this one on farming simulator